Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm gonna be showing how you create a spoon. Not only a spoon, okay, but a fully UV mapped, cleaned out, exported to OBJ type spoon. Whether it is a quad low poly, quad high poly, try low poly, and try uh, high poly. If this is not how you want your spoon to look like at the end, if this is not how you want it to look, please go to another video. I do not want to waste your time. If this is something that you do like and you're like, oh damn, there's some like top tier type spoons. I'm really like interested in see how he does this. Please stick around and I will teach you how to do it. The main reason I want to create this video is because a lot of times I see in tutorials, they teach you how to model stuff, which is awesome. But I feel like when you get to modeling stuff, you may not know how to do another part, which is UV map it, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to show how we can do that with a very basic spoon. The first thing I did is I created these uh, reference images. I will put the reference images below. If you want to create them yourselves, I will link a video below in the description on a tutorial that's probably unlisted on YouTube. They can quickly watch so that you can create your own references and this will be great for any other time you want to do it. But without me rambling on, I'm going to jump right into it and start with a basic spear. I just clicked the basic spear. It could be big or small, depending on how big or small you made your references. And I'm going to scale this up. And what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna focus on it and I'm going to delete all of the top part. One quick thing I wanna bring up, and some of you may freak out, especially if you're new, is that I'm able to see through this. If you cannot, make sure that if you go to shading, you have x-ray check marked. And make sure you have that for the top as well because you need for every different viewpoint you need to have it checked on so like since this is not checked on this still can be this isn't this is so quickly do that and i am going to then kind of ballpark where i want this to end up you do not have to be perfect for the reference a reference is just like you know a a guide on your final project you do not need to be exact perfect with it plus you may go absolutely insane trying to be perfect with it so remember to have fun with that as well because at the end of the day it's just a spoon no one's gonna freak out too much and if someone is freaking out over a spoon uh oh boy um but yeah so all i did was i just squished it a little bit to try and line up with my top image i held down d and I held down V to kind of snap it to, you can hold X actually, that may work, or you just hold D, V, and it'll snap more towards the middle of the object. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring this up a bit. I want this to kind of line up with that first. I can kind of rotate and try and ballpark my idea with this, but What's gonna happen is I wanna leave a little bit of room because I'm gonna be extruding this later to get myself kind of the rest of this. So I'm actually just going to kind of ballpark it here, rotate up a little bit, something like this. Again, you do not have to be perfect with your ideas. Something like this. I'm gonna give this like a second or two because I know some people would like to try and make this the exact image and you may pause it to try and get it going. But with me kind of walking you through it, maybe it's a little bit easier. And now I'm gonna do is I'm going to click R to scale it. If you don't particularly know how to do um, Q, W, E, R and all that fun stuff, uh, Q is to arrow tool, uh, W is to move, E is to rotate, R is to scale. Now I can't get really fancy with the scale tool and kind of double click it and make it on a component and that will give me a nicer kind of curvature for the spoon than what I would have gotten if I just didn't do that. And now I'm kind of getting this nice base look of a spoon, which, you know, it's not amazing. It's not going to be winning anything crazy, but you know what? I'm slowly getting it to where I want to go. Now, the next thing I wanna quickly do before I focus on this is I just wanna get the entire outline of this spoon slowly being created. 
because then I could slowly start working in and fixing some spots, making this thinner, etc., making it more like the reference image I chose. So I go over here, I will grab these two ends because if I look at the top, this kind of lines up perfectly. I'm maybe a little bit off where I can just start creating the stem. I guess it's called the stem with the handle. <laughs> I'm going to extrude edge, kind of kick this back as far as possible. And then I'm just going to try and line up like this. And then I'm going to go to the side view. And instead of immediately rushing for me to kind of put in the middle, I'm going to put it at the bottom. The reason I'm going to put it at the bottom is because currently I do not have anything with this object, right? Like I only have like this kind of bottom part. I'm going to be extruding it eventually. So I kind of want to make sure that I, all I have is this kind of bottom creation first so that then I can make my extruding life a lot easier. I'm then gonna go over here, extrude this, push it down a little more, scale it out a little bit. Cause if I can get this all done when I extrude and it gives me the thickness that I was aiming for, then I will not have to worry about ever touching this part of the handle at all for the rest of the model, which you know, it saves me time and I get to go to another project or maybe play some video games afterwards. Instead of spending some extra time, the extra five, 10 minutes refixing this because it wasn't lined up before. And now I'm up to this part. I'm gonna just grab this, extrude one more time. And then I'm just going to grab both of these edges and I'm gonna scale them to be uh, closer. I'm gonna use DV, kind of snap it to this. And then I don't know why it's acting up. Huh. Weird. I don't know why I did that. Yours should work fine. Mine wants to be annoying apparently. So apologize for that. But now I kind of have all this nice stuff laid out. I'm going to go over here and bring these up just a bit. None too crazy with it. Going to push it like that. Going to push these two up like this. And then that should be fine. Um, maybe push it a little more back. There will be eventual like time in your workflow that you just have to eyeball something. It's not gonna be the absolute change of your model by any means. But getting used to not having to rely 100 sound looking at reference and just being like, you know what, that looks a bit weird, will help push your workflow. So currently I have this nice, kind of silhouette of the spoon. So I know that the shape is slowly coming along. But the thing is, is that this entire thing has no faces. It's, you know, one face. And what I want to do is actually quickly put a face over here so that I can get this curvature start going. I'm going to go to insert edge loop, which I hold down shift and right click. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to click F, F for kind of like focus. And that will bring me to wherever I have currently selected. And I don't know why the, uh, there you go. Huh. Let me fix this reset tool. If your thing's being weird at like mine for some reason, um, there we go. All you have to do is double click on the tool settings, double click it, and then just click reset and it should fix the issue. I'm going to scale this just on the side so I can get this nice kind of pinch going. I'm going to do the exact same thing right here. And then I'm going to, I know it's that skin a little bit more wide than I'd like it to do. Again, I'm going to click that, click F, then click R to scale it and then scale like that. And now I'm slowly getting the shape. I don't have to be too picky. I'm trying to aim it for the least amount of polys as possible so that it, you know, just overall looks cleaner. And yeah. And then I'm going to grab the vertices that I created over here, kind of all eyeball them. And I'm going to start dragging these up to where I feel like they should be. Again, I'm going to just have them at the bottom. I'm not worried about putting them too much at the top. But as you can see, I'm slowly getting this really nice kind of like underline of the object that I'm creating, which is awesome. 
And I'm actually going to put one more in here just so I can get that this part kind of cleaned up. Move it down a little bit. So right there. Sure. Now, I have this nicely set up. I'm going to quickly save. Make sure that you always do control S. Uh, and you know what? One thing I want to quickly show, if you've been starting with the basic project, what you should always do is you should always create a little folder on your desktop or wherever. Create a new folder. I'm going to name it spoon. Um, all right, have a thing named spoon. I'm going to name it spoon one complete professional. And I'm going to go to file. I'm going to do set project. I'm going to do desktop and I'm going to save it into spoon one, click set, create new workplace. And then if you want to get extra fancy, you can go to file, go to project window, click accept. Now you can save with control S or go file and save. And then what this will do is you can go to uh, spoon one scenes. It should send you automatically. If not, you may have to just reset it and type in spoon underscore zero one. Go file, set project. Click set. There you go, create default workplace. Now it should work. Yep, perfect. All right. So if you do that, so far, we have a nice little save spot and we have a nice little work folder for it so that we don't have to worry about anything later down the line. And it's easy, accessible if you ever stop work on this and work back on later. I know I'm about 11 minutes in and we really don't have much done, but this is just kind of like the workflow that will kind of help you more down the line if you want to be a 3D artist. I'm going to click extrude and then I'm just going to mess with the thickness. I'm actually going to make the thickness in the negatives because it's pushing the direction that I want it to go. For the most part, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. It's not gonna be perfect, but I can kind of go like there. Look at where it's kind of, you know, aiming for. Maybe I'll make it a little bit less. Doesn't have to be too crazy. And now I'm slowly getting this really nice uh, thickness for my spoon. There are some things like this isn't done yet, but that's fine. We're gonna work right into that. I'm going to click on F. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to select the entire thing. I'm going to hold down shift, right click, and then I'm going to go to reverse normals. It is under face normals, reverse normals. And that's going to bring us back to this. Let me actually make this full screen again. So we're getting really, really close to being done. What I need to do is I want to fix a couple of these edges because it's looking a little bit, uh, little off centered over here for the reference because there is a little like curvature dip but since i knew that was going to exist even at the beginning i was able to plan ahead and give myself a better um access point with getting prepared for that so now i can go in slowly select all these things push them down a bit And this is why working with reference is also really big. I know it's a lot of tutorials have you kind of just work without reference and that's fine too. You know what? That's it's its own skill set by all means. If you can at the top of head and recreate it, that's awesome. But personally for me, I like to make sure that I have a good reference so that I don't have to think that much besides remembering how to do some keyboard commands. So right now I'm just kind of fidgeting with some of the curves and stuff that I think could be a little bit cleaner. I'm going back in, I'm clicking each one and all I'm doing is I'm scaling it with yellow and then I'm kind of pushing it back to the left and then lining this up to where I think it should go. I'm doing that for each one, something like that. And then that's really it for this part. I'm kind of just, if it's not looking right, again, it is just a spoon at the end of the day. If it's not working exactly the way you intend. You can always make it bigger or smaller depending on how you want it to go. Um, 
I'm running into this situation where I'm starting to make a little mess down here. If you want to be exactly precise to the reference, you can always just delete this. Kind of move this to the left a bit as well. Going to keep doing that. Going to push it down a little bit. Going to scale it with the yellow. And then I'm going to use this nice little trick called fill, fill hole. It burped at a weird inconvenient time. And then I'm going to poke face. Now I can go in and clean up these edges a little bit. It's not too crazy. This is so that the topology still looks good. No issues here. Eventually it's gonna get to a part where it's gonna kind of line itself out. Yeah, there's some parts where it's like, eh, but then for the most part, it is what it is. So the bottom part of the spoon, depending on what you're using it for, it may never be seen. And that's the thing too, you always like, when you work on something, it all, you always want to think about like what you're going to be using it for. If you're going to use it for something that like you're only going to see the top of it, you know, less polys on the bottom, more at the top kind of thing. All right. So I have this nice little part of the spoon existing. I'm also going to go over here and I'm going to quickly change this to make this thicker. Something like that. Push this up a little bit. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for everything right here. And this is why I said it's really nice and important because now I don't have to worry about resizing two parts. All I just have to do is bring this up, line it up, and now I'm slowly getting the full shape of the spoon going, which is awesome. Again, this is less work if I just, if I didn't line it up, if I didn't like make it thinner or thicker, all that fun stuff then I would have to worry about doing that again. And there we go. Now we got majority of the spoon going. I don't really particularly care how this is coming out. So I'm actually just going to drag this up a little bit. Something like that. Doesn't have to be exactly right on reference. And again, right now it's very like, there's not that many polys to this. So as long as I got a small thing going, that's fine. All right. But I just let go of this and I put away this. For the most part, it's looking okay. I think there's some weird kind of edge that's existing over here. Um, and what I want to do with that then is I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to scale it out a bit so that then you don't kind of get that edge anymore. You kind of get a better look at. Actually, I'm going to make it more this. I'm not going to make it out, I'm going to make it more wide. And then what I want to do is I am going to right click and do bevel. And what bevel is going to do is going to let me give myself a better edge to this. And then all I have to do after that is clean up this little piece because now it's going to have this pop out a little bit, which depending on how, what kind of look you're going for, it could look good. But for me, I don't really want it to pop out that much. And now we, with beveling, we created kind of like this triangle right here. And we also created um, this whole little situation here where this is five and we, we do not want those. So what you want to do is you're going to go to the um, insert edge loop. And then over here, you're going to want to, um, actually I'm trying to think of a better way to do this because that's fine. I don't know why I'm blanking now. What you could do is cut this here and then use the multi-cut like that and then multi-cut and like that. And now you got this all nicely set up. You got the quad here being fixed. You have the, uh, the pen being here being fixed for the most part. 
and go in and actually just delete this, which is fine. And now I got four, four, and we are looking good again. Um, sorry about that little brain fart. I don't know why that <laughs> gave me a lot more of an issue. Currently, it is really hot in my office, and I have my AC turned off because without with my AC turning on, my quality of voice is absolutely abysmal. So the moment that this video is over, I'm immediately blasting again, which I could also be in a rush, but trying to finish this. So, all right. So we have a spoon. I know, crazy. If I smooth it, the spoon looks a little bit better. I'm actually gonna go in and double click this because I don't particularly care how this is very indented. What I could do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select a good part of these faces so that I don't have to do it for each one uh, individually. I could just do it all for one quick push. Um, let me zoom in with this. There we go. Now I'm gonna smooth in. And then I'm gonna push this over here. And then we should be fine. I don't really like how that's ending up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all this. There's a faster way, but if you're new to this, just holding down shift and then clicking is better. Um, and then I'm gonna click this. Fill hole. Don't do that. Face, hold down shift, hook face. There you go. So depending on how you want your spoon, this is kind of like the main approach that I would have for it. Again, this is kind of being weird. Probably the more fidget, like the more fidget part of the spoon. You can see how you want to go about it. And there you go. So that is pretty much this reference for the most part. If you don't like how the spoon came out, you can always try and adjust it, fix it, but you may end up going crazy depending on how everything is looking. So now I am going to pop up the other ones that I created. And the reason that these are all created in their own little ways is because um, if I click here, oops, these are all also UV mapped. So if I go to UV map, I got this. And if I click on this, it's gonna be completely janky. There's red everywhere. There's probably a ton of stretching, but over here, this is all nice. No, no real stretching. Um, it's more stretching for these because I, I smoothed them so that they have more polys, but for the clean low poly ones, there is really no stretching. So what am I gonna do? All I'd have to do is click here and a nice little quick tutorial of UV mapping is I'm going to double click here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the colors here first. And usually what I would do is uh, kind of use my second monitor for this process to give myself more room. But since I am doing this as a tutorial, I will stick to one. which now it's becoming a situation. All right. So those are connected. What you want pretty much is a whole like yellow line going around the whole thing in some way, shape and form. Then what I can do is actually, I'm gonna have to redo that cause I want to delete that and then go to create and click create normal with the object selected. Or I can click, uh, never click automatic. Automatic creates some very weird UVs and Unless you're really good at putting it together, you're gonna run into some annoying issues. So now I'm reselecting everything that I had previously missed. I wanna make sure that this is going the right way that I wanted to right over here. I'm gonna deselect that one. I got that going. And now I'm gonna go to uh, cut, cut and sue. So, and then click cut. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hover here, click UV shell, I'm gonna click on one, I'm gonna click on fold. And then I'm gonna click on this one, click on fold as well. So now I have two separate UVs 
And then what I want to do is I want to get their uh, texel text density. If I look under tools, do you run into here? I can go over here and I'm going to try, I'm going to do 2k resolution because I feel like it's a pretty solid amount. You can go higher, lower. I'm going to click set. 32.5 kind of works for me, depending on how big or small you created the 3D models. And then I'm going to click E and kind of just rotate them to being kind of the same size, like almost perfect, like kind of sideways. And then that's pretty much that. So now these are perfect UV maps. I can click on this and there's a little bit of stretching, but that's actually not that big of a deal. So don't worry about it too much. Unless this was going to be like some high quality end type stuff, it is going to be more than fine for what you're going to want it to do. And what I could do is if I click on fold again, maybe it'll clean up some of them, but that'd be fine. And then what I also want to make sure is if I click the checker pattern, get rid of that, that this looks really good. Checker patterns, there's no real issues. And yeah, so now we have this nicely UV mapped. So if you're looking at this, you're like, you know what? There's way too little polys, things like that. That is because this is a very quick based quad creation. If you want to smooth it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click down shift D to duplicate. And then I'm going to hold down shift, right click, and I'm going to go smooth and that will smooth it for you. If it creates some extra faces you don't particularly care for, you can always delete them. And now right into the fun part. If you want to end up with creating them as tries instead of quads, I'm going to duplicate this one, push this over. You can go to mesh and then click triangulate and that will turn that to triangles. And then I can shift D that again, go over here, click it and then go and then click smooth. And now I have all four of these different versions to whatever I particularly desire. One last thing to add before we export it is, you know, your texturing. So when you go inside the attribute editor, editor also you want to make sure they do the history. I'm going to click here, click on uh, edit, delete all by type history. I'm then going to go here, you know, it says Lambert one. I'm going to go give all four of these a new and I'm just going to name this spoon text zero two because I already have zero one because that is this other one. This, the reason it looks is I gave it an AI standard surface. If you do not have that enabled into your Maya, you won't be able to do it. It's very simple, but I honestly forgot where the preference is. I think it's like up here display or something. Um, but that is a whole different part. Um, settings preferences yeah it's somewhere in all around there <laughs> let me not get distracted and you just have to enable that and that'll let you use ai standard but for now having lambert is fine and so with that you have it being fully uv mapped perfectly fine this is a smooth tripoly or low tripoly smooth quad or regular quad and now the last thing you could do is line these up in the middle so you can line them up at one at a time and then you can go to file export selection go to obj use fpx again it's really just personal preference and you can type in spoon um this is quad i don't remember if it's smooth if it's it is uh low res so i can do like low poly Oh, one. And that's just professional in a way of doing it. So if you ever had to give this to someone, they can see that it's a quad low poly export. And then I'm not going to export it, but that will pop up with the OBJ file. And that OBJ file would have the following would have the low poly quad. It would have it UV mapped. It would have its texture thing named. So if you dropped it to substance painter or something, it'd be professionally named and it's clean topology, no issues. And yeah, that is pretty much that. Again, if you're interested in using this, uh, this will be in the description. 
and anything on the lines of wanting to create this there will be a link on how to create reference files yourself but yeah hopefully this was interesting i know this is very long this is 30 minutes i literally just looked at the time and so 30 minutes to create a spoon is definitely relatively slow and i do apologize for that but hopefully it taught you a couple things about uv mapping and if you are just getting into 3d modeling and you thought making silverware is going to be easy and stuff hopefully this taught you a good amount but with that i hope you enjoyed the video you don't have to leave a like you don't have to subscribe or anything this is just me kind of helping out or using what i know knowledge wise to maybe benefit what you want to do and if you find this to be helpful definitely let me know if you found it to be boring let me know if you hated it absolutely despised it again any type of constructive criticism i would appreciate but with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe I'll see you in tutorial for the next time I create one. And if not, uh, have a good one, have a good life, and I'll see you around. Peace.